Hello everyone, it's me, Ari Dossett, Con Rashid, I'm your anthropologist and sociologist. Hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel, become a member of the channel, don't forget, don't leave the links below, and check my novels on Amazon, please. Thank you. Why do solutions often fail? Let's look at history. Now, history is not an answer for everything in life. There's a phrase that goes like this. History repeats itself. And there's another one similar to it. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Now, historians may cringe when you say history repeats itself. Why? Because the exact situations never repeat. I mean, if your grandfather had a horrible marriage, and you have a horrible marriage, and you're both from the same ethnic background, it was still a different situation back then. Not now. The past doesn't literally repeat itself. We know that. But what does happen is that history tends to rhyme. So when people say history repeats itself, what they actually mean is, is that similar things tend to happen again. Now look, some things will happen in a similar way. Think about the cycle of rainfall. Water is in the oceans and the seas. It vaporizes in, into the air, turns into clouds. Then it moves towards the mountainous areas, begins to fall again as rain. Then it, through the rainfall, it goes through the rivers and so back in the seas and oceans. So that's the cycle of rainfall. And that has been going on since the Heavenly Father created uh, the earth. And that will always continue for all eternity. One thing we need to understand about history is that history isn't just about natural processes like rainfall. It's often about human behavior. So, of course, if there's a hurricane in uh, the Caribbean right now, man, how many hurricanes have been there for, for the past centuries? So, of course, there will be hurricanes. If you say history repeats itself because there are hurricanes still there, well, there will be hurricanes. That's how the environment there is built, for that father. If you say that, well, it's snowing again in Norway, well, it's respected. It's a Nordic country. The history repeats itself relates to human behavior. Now, one thing I want you to understand about human behavior, and I'm an anthropologist speaking over you. Human behavior comes from the environment they grew up in. None of us got our behavior and attitudes just by ourselves, out of the blue. No, we were shaped by our environment. And environment are the other people around us. That's why if you were born in China, you likely speak fluent Chinese by now. If you were born in, let's say, Bolivia or Mexico, you speak fluent Spanish. Did you invent Spanish? No. Did you invent the mannerisms that you developed over time? No. Those were shaped inside of you. Now, as a grown man or grown woman, you have the ability to decide, I want to be different. But you're still going to have the basis you have to deal with. Someone that was born in, say, Bolivia or, or, or Mexico, the only they have is the Spanish language. If they want to learn another language, let's say French or um, maybe Polish or whatever, they still have to master Spanish fluently and properly. Because if they can't even speak their own language properly, how the heck are they going to learn another language? So, as a human being, you get a basis. You get a, ba you get a basic um, shape by your environments, so, uh, psychologically. And you now can work with the psychological base you receive in your environment. That psychological base also contains trauma, bad attitudes, all types of trash of your culture. Hey, but that's what you have to work with. So if you decide that you want to be better, because you admit that not everything you got from your environment was good, good for you. Unfortunately, that's not the norm in the human species. Human beings tend to excuse dysfunction and even look away from wrongdoing, especially wrongdoings committed by a group. So, 
because human beings have a tendency to make excuses for wrongdoing, and they tend to look away when evil is done, dysfunction tends to continue generation after generation. It is not easy to look at yourself in the mirror and admit you have deficiencies and that you have, have defects. It is not an easy thing to do. It's especially not easy to look at others around you and see that it isn't just you. It's everyone who has deficiencies and defects. And it's not if you realize that the only thing you can make happen is that you decide to become better. You can't make others want better. So you realize that as long as you're alive, you have to deal with a lot of people that remain defective and deficient. That's what the Bible calls iniquity. Iniquity is when violence is normalized in a population. It's normalized through excuses and through mythological explanations. For example, in astrology, you have this thing that if you burn, if you're born, I mean born in a certain month, then you have certain behavior characteristics. And people would ask, what's your sign? Some say, I'm Pisces. Others would say, I'm Leo. Some say, I'm Virgo. I mean, now they base people's character based on the month you're born in. Even though the month you're born in has nothing to do with how your character develops as a human being. That's with your environment and your own personal decisions while growing up and also after you've grown. But it's easier to use astrology to explain away deficiencies within your own character than to own up to them and look for help. So normalizing violence happens various ways. Excuses, mythological explanations, and religion is another um, way violence is normalized. Just know that that is the cursed condition of human species. The only way out is by serving the Heavenly Father. Unfortunately, to serve the Heavenly Father, you have to worship in His Spirit and in truth, just like Christ said. But here's the thing spirit and truth means that you have to be real, you have to own up to things. And a lot of people simply don't want to own up to things. So they look for like minded people that also are desperate to escape, just like them, and they form this movement called, called society. Society is a movement of adults that seek to escape together. Society is nothing but organized escapism. Here's the problem with that, though. Escapism brings forth more damage. What do they do when damage accumulates and there's always unrest around? They don't want to change from escapism to being realistic. At least most people don't. So they look for an outlet for the unrest and then you can think like nothing happened. So society can only function if there are victims to leech off. So society is organized escapism and with that also it's organized victimization. Now, society cannot work if people are fully aware of what they're doing. Because when they're fully aware that they're doing wrong, so that they can cowardly escape, the effect of the organized organization will not work. Let me give an example. Let's say someone uh, stabs, let's say Jeffrey stabs Mike. And Mike claims, oh, uh, Mike tried to attack me. Now, if people believe what Jeffrey said, they're not okay with Jeffrey stabbing Mike, but now they will condone it and they will choose Jeffrey's side because it was self-defense. But I'll just expect uh, Jeffrey to just allow Mike to kill him. If later the truth comes out that it was Jeffrey that attacked Mike and Mike was one fan fanning him off and then Jeffrey just killed him out of spite, can people still defend Jeffrey and get away with it psychologically? No. Because now it's in their face that there's a cold-blooded killer amongst them. And for them to side with him means that they don't value their own life. Because everyone that values themselves and their own life would not put up with such a horrible human being like Jeffrey. No, they wouldn't. So, in this case, 
let's say Jeffrey stabbed Mike. And people don't want to admit they're dealing with a cold-blooded killer amongst them. Because once you admit you're dealing with a cold-blooded killer, now you need to do something about it. So let's say now there's no legal system, uh, there is no police system, there's no law and order, none of that. People would just assume that Jeffrey had a good reason for stabbing Mike. Mike must have deserved it, whatever. And little by little, people will, will make up stories just to justify them con uh, condoning Jeffrey's presence. Why? They should expel Jeffrey from the community immediately. But here's the thing. If Mike was just a random individual, it would have been easier to say, hey, hey Jeffrey, what did you do? Stabbing people like that. Get out of here. But here's the thing. What if a big portion of the community was murmuring and complaining about Mike? What if the community as a whole used Mike as an outlet? Instead of looking at themselves and facing their own deficiencies and their own lack, they were projecting all of this onto Mike. So people generate a negative climate towards Mike. And now Jeffrey, a psychopath, was triggered by this toxic mood, toxic environment, and he acted it out. So if Jeffrey stabs Mike, and now people begin to go against Jeffrey, Jeffrey can tell who don't mean it. Wasn't this the guy all of you were, were, were complaining about? You, you guys want to see him around? You hope he disappears, you don't like him, blah, blah, blah. Didn't some of you tell him in his face you don't like him all of that? You will want him to be gone? And now suddenly go off against me, and now everyone is exposed. Everyone is embarrassed. And once there's public embarrassment, it's very hard for people to cope with that psychologically. A lot of people can't cope with it. They lose their mind. So to prevent public embarrassment for the population, people tend to stick with the excuses. Oh, Mike must deserve being stabbed. Or um, Jeffrey may have a good reason. Or maybe Jeffrey didn't know any better. Whatever. So what, whatever excuse come up with. And that's how iniquity continues. Even with a court system, even with a police system and a, a so-called law and order, those things, a court system, law, order, and police cannot stop violence. They can only regulate the violence. That's all they can do. So those excuses still happen today. It's not just in ancient tribal communities that happen. It also happens today because human beings who don't serve the fault are still tribal. I don't care how advanced the technology is today. Human beings that don't serve the fault are still tribal in how they function. They make distinctions that don't exist just to build an identity that's weak to, to maintain. And anyone or anything that threatens this psychological, um, how to say, who threatens this, uh, this psychological image, this false self of theirs, they attack. But anyway, go back to the example of Jeffrey and Mike. What if Mike did not want to get along with escapism. Let's say everyone around is smoking a lot and screaming at children. Michael screamed at himself when he grew up. And he has mental problems because of it. And he sees a lot of people around him are smoking and also screaming at children, even those that used to be screamed at when they were children. And Mike one day uh, decides, hold on a minute, guys. Why are we screaming at children like that? Why aren't we just dealing with our difficulties as grown folks? And why are we smoking a lot like that, destroying our own health? I mean, what type of, why do you scream at children while you yourself are destroying yourself by smoking like that? What is that? So Mike does not smoke, and Mike willfully decides that he wants to treat children better, and thus will continue the child abuse that's so common in this community. So Mike here is what you can call the good guy. Mike is the one doing what's right and is doing what should be done. But there's the issue. All the other people around Mike are not doing that. They continue with a cycle of child abuse so that they don't have to face anything. So Mike, if, if Mike could joins them and pass on the damage to the next generation, nobody would notice anything. It would just be the norm. But because Mike 
admit that this doesn't add up. I don't want to continue doing this. Now, him admitting that and owning up to it and taking responsibility makes everyone else look bad, especially people older than him. And this is public embarrassment. When the whole community or when the majority of people in a society, when they pass on the damage and you decide not here, guess what? It triggers public embarrassment and makes others look bad. What if you have parents beating their children and that's kind of the norm? And one day, when, when your dad or your mom tries to hit you, you grab their hand and say, not here. You call the cops on them and you, and you so-called fight back, say, I don't take this. The fact alone you have to stand up against your parents abusing you already shows that London, where was the community to intervene? So when you decide you don't want to pass on the damage, you make the public look bad. And let me tell you, there's one thing human beings cannot handle well, and that is being publicly embarrassed. There's one thing people have a hard time processing psychologically that's being embarrassed publicly. When you decide you're not going to pass on the damage, you embarrass society around you, embarrass the public. And let me tell you, even though they will admit your rights, intellectually they'll admit your rights, but they don't incite emotionally, they're upset with you. They feel violated by you. They feel attacked by you. And because they are in escapism, they will put logic and rationality aside and they will go with how they feel. And because they are publicly embarrassed and this affects them psychologically, they now have mental health problems because of it. They're going to they realize if you would have kept your mouth shut, if you would just allow yourself to be victimized, if you would just allow yourself to be damaged and you cause other damage the way all of us do, we wouldn't have these mental health issues. But because you did what was best for you, you did what was right, and you called things out, now we have to face things. We are overwhelmed and now we have mental health issues. So they're going to blame you for how they feel. Even though they, they should have admitted these things all along, how can you do what's best for you and for the community be, be an offense? But they will perceive it as an offense because now they have to process that they are forced to process things they don't want to process. So in this case, Mike, there was right. The community didn't want to uh, admit this. So now the community begins to act out revenge against Mike. Now, they don't directly attack Mike, but they begin to murmur complain about them. Some people begin to avoid him. Some people had enough courage to tell them, oh, I don't like you, you mo uh, uh, blah, 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 they begin to cuss them out. And those people only dared to do that because they knew there was a big portion of people out there that couldn't stand uh, Mike. So if now, let's say Jeffrey comes up and stabs Mike, He's doing a dirty job. People want to get rid of Mike, but none of them actually dares to do it because nobody wants to deal with the consequences of directly killing someone. So now, Jeffrey attempted to do what everyone wanted to do, but now they all look at Jeff like, what the heck is Jeffrey doing? Guess what? Jeff now can call them out. So either they get rid of Jeffrey swiftly and they act very innocent towards Mike, like they're good people, but likely can't agree with that, or they will keep silent about it. And the second often happens. I'm telling you, the example of Jeffrey and Mike that I made up, it shows how iniquity continues. Iniquity is when a population normalizes violence. And once it's normalized, it's very hard to break that cycle. As a matter of fact, once violence is normalized, you deciding to break a cycle may cost you your life. Unless you have some protection by the Heavenly Father. This is the reason why a lot of people may hint through comedy that something doesn't add up. But they won't flat out say it, nor show proof of it. Because they know, once the public is embarrassed, and, yeah, and, go, and a lot of people go through mental issues because of it, they will be enraged at the one who decided to break the cycle. Society wants you to notice the evil, but you keep your mouth shut. You keep your mouth shut. You, if you're damaged, you 
explain yourself and then act like the community is not to blame for allowing it to happen to you. And then you, when you're older, you look for a victim yourself and you transfer the harm further in a way that's legally allowed. That society expects from you. Society does not want you to be in your right mind, calling things out and refusing to participate in passing on the damage. Remember when Jesus went to Gadara and there was this demon-possessed man with a legion of demons inside of him? Remember when Jesus delivered the man from the legion of demons? The demons asked Jesus, can we enter the swine, please? Jesus allowed them to. When the demons entered the herd of swine, the swine became suicidal and turned one another and drowned one another. This thing. What happened to that herd of swine should have happened to the community over there. Because the community over there that was scapegoating this demon possessed men. So when that happened and the public came and saw all the dead swine, thousands of them in the lake, floating, that didn't scare them. What scared them was that the man, the old Donald Paul, was in his right mind. Because, because the man previously was not in his right mind, they could use it against him. Oh, this guy's mentally ill, the man's out of his mind, you gotta take him seriously. So they could use that to get the way of mistreating him. And by everyone agreeing to mistreat him, everyone felt relieved that they were not the one mistreated, and they got an access to supply by not having to own up to themselves nor those around them. But now that the one that they relied upon to be worse off than them is better off than them, what are you going to do now? Now they have no choice but to face things. That's why they begged Jesus to leave them alone and to go. This type of behavior by the public often happen when you decide to break the cycle of violence. When you decide not to pass on the damage, often people will be upset with you and they tell you to leave. Either they'll push you to leave in a more polite, peaceful way, or they sort of tell you to fuck off, get out of here, Based on the ones you around, or, or they go violently against you. Anyway, when you don't pass on the damage, you're actually showing people you guys have to deal with the damage now. And because nobody wants to look at the damage, and other people are forced to deal with it, they're going to see you as a perpetrator, you as a troublemaker, and they're going to blame you for how bad they feel. They're going to blame you for how they malfunction. And guess what? They're all going to come after you at some point. Look. Christ said, don't cause your pearls before swine. We're not meant to unnecessarily put ourselves in trouble. If you know that people don't want to hear something, even though it's true, then don't tell them it. Look, if there's danger towards, for example, children, and nobody wants to hear it, in that case, you make sure people hear it because, hey, what the heck, because children can't help themselves. But if it's a topic that people know they need to address, but they don't want to, unless the Heavenly Father guides you, do not address it openly, because you will be putting yourself unnecessarily in, tr in trouble. Look, because of iniquity, we can see throughout human history that social changes are rare. For example, you had the Egyptian Empire dominated the world. After that, the Assyrian Empire. Then shit was the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Then the Medo-Persian Empire came up. Then the Per, uh, then the Greek Empire came up, which they're also called the Macedonian Empire for political reasons. The Greek Empire shifted into the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire divided into, and now you have remnants of Roman Empire stru uh, struggling and competing for the so-called legacy of the Roman Empire. So, the nations that dominated the earth changed. First the ancient Egyptians, then the Syrians, then the Babylonians, then the Medes and the Persians, then the Greeks, then uh, the mixed Greeks, which we call the Romans, and throughout what the West Roman Empire later the Catholic kingdoms, which turned into West colonial powers. In the East, the East Roman Empire, you had the, East, the Orthodox Christianity coming forth, and later Islam uh, emerged also, you had the Ottoman Empire. So, so what I'm saying is the domination, the political domination may shift here and there, but it's still the world. People are still escaping. One thing is that history shows that people don't change for the better unless they're forced to change for the better. And even that will not be an easy 
process that is something people normally don't do. Let's look at the exodus of the Israelites out of ancient Egypt. Why didn't their father allow Moses when he was still young? Because Moses was a pharaoh together with his stepdad. Because Egypt was divided. Moses had experience in diplomacy, in warfare, finance, all of that. Why didn't their father just push Moses when he was 40 to leave the Israelites who were in slavery towards the land of Canaan, then declared the land of Canaan autonomous, then independent from Egypt? It would have been People was, it, it would have worked. But then historians, even us today, would say, hmm, this was just a prince from Egypt starting his own dynasty. We would see this, see this as a continuation of the Pharaohic history. We wouldn't see this as God acting. So the Heavenly Father made sure that Moses was in his old age, tithed and depleted, and Egypt was united under a pagan dynasty, and then the Heavenly Father anointed Moses to go back and through the ten plagues destroy all the whole Egyptian empire. And it, it happened by trick by tricking them in resistance. And by their own resistance, they destroyed themselves, this happened with the ancient Egyptians. And now the ancient Egyptian Egypt, Egypt, Egypt Empire collapsed. Now they also had to hand over all the wealth, all the riches. And overnight, the Israelites went from being slaves to being the richest, wealthiest, healthiest nation on the earth. And then you had the, the cross into the Red Sea. All those things were to make sure people realize that the father is behind it and God gets the credit. And because God got the credit, the Israelites were better off. Rarely did anyone ever dare to challenge them. All of this had to happen to make sure the status quo before the Exodus wouldn't come back. Thing is, a lot of Israelites who witnessed the Exodus themselves did not enter the promised land because they were still holding on to the past. Even though the past they were holding on to was horrible. Human beings are creatures of habit, and nothing wrong with having habits. But when we hold on to habits unconditionally, that goes far. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of human beings do in this fallen state holding on to habits without any good reason. Having a good habit is good, but if a habit becomes dysfunctional and harmful, you need to let it go. You need to develop better habits. Some say it takes 21 days to develop new habits. I don't know much about the science. You can look it up for yourself. But what I'm saying is we need to admit the following. Social changes do happen throughout history and do happen today, but they're often slow and they often have to be enforced and well when changes for the better are uh, when change for the better happen they are often met with fierce violent resistance just like ancient egypt they not easily give in to moses and let go of their violence against the israelites the same we need to understand no satanic structure willingly destroys themselves and makes us irrelevant. Satanic structures rely on violence to be relevant. That's all they have. So they will not freely give up their violence. They hold on to the violence more and more when they're declining. And today, 2024, with the decline of what we call the Western world, to we'll see the exact same thing. What we call the Western world is likely I hope I'm wrong, but based on history and based on sociological and anthropological processes, we can expect what we call the Western world, that's the United States, Canada, um, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. We can expect the Western world to become more fanatic in their white supremacy and their racism, to become more fanatic in their anti-migrant sentiments, even to the point of having tribal conflicts and civil wars. Now, I hope I'm wrong and sudden changes for the better happen quicker, but hey, we need to keep it real. When a satanic structure is coming to its end, it is then that the satanic structure gets at its worst. It's then they go wilder than ever before. So, change for the better 
are always met with violent resistance. You can see it in the Bible, and also when you read other sources of history, you can see the same thing. So in your own life as a believer, understand that you improving and every breakthrough you have in life will be met by some type of violent opposition. It may not be violence directly into your face physically, but it may be violence financially, economically, socially, suddenly out of the blue, uh, you're blacklisted and you don't even know about it. You apply for jobs, you can't get any jobs, or suddenly people boycott your products, or it can it could be you're not invited to parties anymore, or anywhere, anywhere you go, people look angry at you and try to avoid you to make you feel bad. There's also violence. If you decide to do the will of your father and not pass on the damage, expect persecution, expect retaliation. Even unbelievers who decide this go through it. Now, the unbeliever doesn't have the protection of their father, so they'll likely die or they're in prison or tortured or killed, whatever. Sometimes even believers, such things happen to when they're not um, fully delivered. Let's be fully delivered, walk in the, in the restoration part of Christ, so that we will fulfill our days in life in abundance as God intended it, despite the violence of the world. Listen, social changes happen, but not without a fight. Especially if the social change for the better, expect a fight against it. So be realistic with what you expect in life. Don't just be factual about the things you want to hear. Be real about what the facts uh, imply. Be real about the implications of the facts also. What's it for now? Keep on agreeing with Christ and be at peace.